So today we're going to be doing a Berserk Weapon Progression Guide, all the way from the very start of your dungeon's journey and up until the end. To start things off, what is the first weapon you should use in dungeons as a Berserk? Honestly, anything will do. Something like an Aspect of the End, it doesn't even need to be dungeonized, or maybe just even a Void Sword. Anything. At this point, the weapons aren't really going to be dungeonized, you just need something to get you started off with that's going to do more damage than your fist. And then the first proper weapon in the guide to progression will definitely be the aspect of the dragons. Costing less than a million coins and having base stats of 225 damage and 100 strength. Also it boasts a pretty nice right click ability too. For those of you who are Iron Man, you're probably best off start to grind some eyes, considering you're going to have to obtain this through dragons. The aspect of the dragons at one point was one of the best weapons in the game. The price has been up and down over the years, but it is still undeniably a great early game weapon. The great thing about this weapon is you only need to be Catacombs level 12 to actually dungeonize it and use it. Which means then at that point, your damage is going to scale. And increase pretty rapidly. Anyway, moving on, you have weapons such as the Flower of Truth. Now I'd say this is probably a slight step up from the aspects of the dragons. Not only does it have slightly better base stats, giving you plus 150 damage and plus 300 strength. It also has a nice right click ability which is going to help you clear probably quite a lot faster. The only thing I will say is if you are struggling maybe to survive then it may not be the best option considering every time you use your right click ability it takes 10% of your health. The huge downside to the Flower of Truth is to use it you actually need a Catacombs Floor 6 completion. So it's a kind of obsolete um, in terms of early game progression. Another weapon to mention at this stage is the Adaptive Blade. I personally wouldn't necessarily use it considering the Aspects of the Dragons is realistically going to be better than it. It's more expensive than the Aspects of the Dragons, although it only requires a floor 2 completion. It's more of a sidestep and if you don't have too many coins, I wouldn't really recommend buying it. But, it is in there. Now before we go any further, if you are planning on purchasing anything from the Hypixel store, make sure to use code NITROS, it gets yourself 5% off. Also, you should subscribe to the channel, it really does help out a lot. And you should join the Discord server, it's linked in the description of this video. Next up we have a weapon that I used to believe was the be all and end all for quite a while. That weapon is the Livid Dagger. The Livid Dagger's base stats are very very good, it gives you plus 210 damage, plus 60 strength, plus 100% crit chance, plus 50% crit damage and plus 50% bonus attack speed. Your right click ability throws a dagger at the enemy and you also deal double damage when you hit an enemy in the back. For the price of 7 million coins I would say this is quite a sizable step up from the aspects of the dragons um, and it's definitely worth the coins. For early game players, the automatic plus 100% crit chance is really quite useful, and the plus 50% bonus attack speed is also very useful too. Now from here, there's quite a jump in price to everything else. What I've gone through here are your probably your more affordable weapons. So next up, I want to talk about the Bouquet of Lies. This weapon is a direct upgrade of the Flower of Truth, and is basically just a better Flower of Truth. A base Bouquet of Lies is going to set you back around about 20 million coins at the moment, and its base stats give you plus 220 damage, plus 300 strength, and plus 50% crit damage. Once again, it has a nice right click ability where it basically shoots a rose, and that ricochets off enemy to enemy, dealing more damage as basically the further the rose goes. Once again, very, very nice for clearing. Is it essential in your Berserk progression? Absolutely not. It's something that you can probably buy if you have spur coins to try it out and see if you like it. One thing I will say is this requires a floor 6 completion to use, and the weapon like the Living Dagger that we just looked at only requires a floor 5 completion. When you look at the base stats, they're not too different. Okay, next up I'm going to go through three weapons, and it is completely up for debate in which order you put these weapons. There's pros and cons to all of them. So first off we have the Shadow Fury. The Shadow Fury's base stats are plus 300 damage, plus 130 strength, plus 30% crit damage, and plus 30 speed. These stats can be slightly buffed if you also frag it. At the moment this weapon has dropped a decent amount, it's coming in at around about 40 million coins. The reason why it's dropped is just purely because there's so many more options as Berserk now. The Shadow Fury's right click ability means you basically teleport behind enemies, which is actually a really really nice ability. The great thing about this weapon is it only requires a floor 5 completion, which is relatively low. Okay next up we have kind of 2 in 1. This is one of the new weapons, this is the Bone Reaver. Um, it gives you plus 235 damage, plus 90 strength, plus 0 0.5 swing range. It's right click ability, uh, slashes in a huge arc, dealing 125% melee damage to all enemies hit. It's a really good weapon. The requirement to use this is a floor 4 completion, which is pretty low, and it will set you back 53 million coins for a base sword. Now the edge this has above the Shadow Fury is it has the extra swing range, and it also has the great right click ability. It is going to fall short in damage. 
And here we have the direct upgrade um, from the Bone Reaper, which is the Felthorn Reaper. Now, this is just basically a completely upgraded sword. It's pretty much the same as what I've just gone through. It gives you a base plus 275 damage, plus 115% crit damage, and plus one swing range. It has the same right click ability, other than it deals 135% melee damage instead of 125. This weapon is going to cost 70 million coins at base, and once again this can be fragged uh, and gain um, a bit more of a base buff. Once again in terms of damage, this is going to fall slightly uh, short of the Shadow Fury, however it makes up for it by being able to um, um, reach an extra one block away with the plus one swing range. It also has a really really good right click ability which basically just wipes out all enemies, it's basically like a Berserk Hyperion. And next up we have the Giant Sword. Now you might be thinking why are we talking about the Giant Sword in a Berserk sort of comparison. And actually, uh, you've got to hear me out because um, a couple of days ago I actually made a video about the Giant Sword and actually how usable it really is in dungeons. Because at the moment, one of basically the meta weapon to use within dungeons and with uh, being a Berserk is the Dark Claymore. And the Dark Claymore is basically just a better Giant Sword. Anyway, the Giant Sword gives us plus 500 damage and uh, plus one swing range. It's right click ability basically just fires a massive sword at an enemy. It's not really amazing. A base version of this giant sword is 184 million coins, so it is substantially more expensive. However, in terms of one hit damage, it will massively out damage the rest of the weapons that I've already gone through today. To use this giant sword, you're going to need to have a floor 6 completion, which is actually the same as the last weapon that I've just mentioned in the Felthorn Reaper. And at the moment, at the top of the food chain in terms of berserk progression is the Dark Claymore. At base, this is going to give you plus 500 damage, plus 100 strength, plus 30% crit damage, and plus 2 swing range. It's going to cost around about 400 million coins at base, and require a master mode floor 7 completion. So there is quite a big barrier to entry, that means you need to be at least Catacombs 36. Once again, this is going to out damage the Giant Sword, not by a huge amount, however it does have an extra 1 swing range, which is really useful. Unfortunately, the weapon that probably should be the best Berserk weapon on the game is still awaiting a buff. The Valkyrie is 1 billion coins, but definitely not worth it. Now, there's probably going to be workarounds here and there, and there may even be a couple of weapons that you could potentially use here and there, but personally, for me, that is somewhat sort of the progression that I would use. Now, there is a bit of contention as basically what you should actually buy, and it's probably down to preference in terms of between like a Shadow Fury and then um, the Felthorn. Uh, it's completely up to you. And then depending on your coins and your completions will probably dictate what the actual end weapon is that you use. But hopefully this has been helpful to some extent. It is going to be the end of the video. I hope you all have enjoyed. If you have, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you in the next one.